Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. Uh, my name is Stephen Kariungi and today we continue with our topic genetics in form for biology and uh, <clears throat> I would like us to discuss uh, how the Punet square can be applied uh, to solve particular uh, questions. For example, given any situation and then you are told to use the Punet square, how can you go about applying that to answer a question? <coughs> so using a Punet square. to show genetic crossing and we'll use an example here so the example is written down here So we are going to use a Punet square to show genetic crossing by use of an example. It's a very long question. And these are some of the kind of questions that you expect in a, in a paper 2 setup where you are given a certain case study and then you are expected to uh, determine the outcome of that particular case. So we are told that uh, in a breeding experiment, garden peas with axial flowers were crossed with plants with terminal flowers. And then all the F1 plants had axial flowers. So we are crossing the axial flowers with the terminal flowers, but we are getting all had axial flowers. And then when F1 plants were selved, Self is more or less self pollination. A total of 858 seeds were produced in the F2 generation, out of which 651 gave rise to plants with axial flowers. And of course, the remaining ones had the terminal flowers. So, using the figures given, work out the ratio of F2 plants with axial flowers to that with terminal flowers. So here uh, we want to find out the solution. Those with uh, axial flowers against those with the terminal flowers. <coughs> the axial flowers we are told that uh, we had 651 out of a total of 858. So the remaining ones, 858 if you subtract 651, the remaining ones will be the terminal flowers. So this one will be 8752. So the, this, the terminal ones will be 207. So that when you add them, you get 858, which was the total. And then uh, we are told uh, using the figure, uh, work out the ratio 
with axial flowers and terminal flowers. So that ratio, we should not leave it like that. That ratio, we should not leave it like that. Uh, we should get uh, a more simplified uh, ratio, or we should simplify this uh, particular ratio. So to simplify, we divide both sides by 207, 207, so that here we get 1, and here 651 divided by 207, we'll get uh, 3.144 is to 1. So this is approximately a ratio of 3 is to 1. So we should leave that ratio in its simplest form. We should not leave it uh, as 651 and 207. Then B, <coughs> using a Punnett square to show the genotypes, or use a Punnett square to show the genotypes of F2 offspring, and then we work out the phenotypic ratio. So here, we'll get the parental phenotype that is in F2. So in the F2, we are getting axial flowers versus terminal flowers. Then we go to the parental genotype. So we can say let letter A represent the dominant allele. The dominant allele. Can erase this. The dominant allele. So for axial uh, flowers, we use uh, A. Small A. And the terminal ones, we use... Uh, small a, small a. So we had uh, So the terminal flowers, we use the small letters because they are the recessive. <clears throat> then we come to the gametes. So the gametes have capital A and small a and these others had small a and There's something I want to confirm that uh, F1 plants were selled. So the F1 plants were selled. So we are using uh, Axio versus Axio, not terminal and Axio. Because we are doing selfing, crossing with one like itself. So Axio versus Axio.
So this will be capital small and capital small. Then from here we draw a punit square. So assuming the one was male, the other one was female. So this is that. And the other one was that. So this will be A, A. This A, small A. A, small A. And small A, small A. <coughs> <clears throat> so in this is the F2 genotype. And then we are told to work out, so to show the genotypes of F2 offspring, which we have done, uh, work out the phenotypic ratio of the F2 phenotypic ratio. So the phenotype of the first one was axio the second axio this is axio and the last one was uh, terminal so we had three axio flowers against one terminal uh, flower and therefore that gives a ratio of three is to one as we had earlier calculated so the number that we have calculated must agree with the ratio that we had got here. And that shows that uh, the answer is correct. <clears throat> Name the recessive trait in this cross and then give a reason for your answer. The recessive trait is the terminal flower. The terminal flower is the recessive because... In heterozygous state, uh, the flowers are axial. In a heterozygous state, uh, all the flowers, all the flowers are axial or are of axial state. So that shows that the terminal flower is being dominated on by the axial flower. <coughs> so we are going to have an assignment on that. So the first question, what is heterozygous state, B, homozygous state, and C, recessive allele, as we have explained them. And then number two, what is selfing? So you'll answer those questions based on what we have already discussed. So we'll stop there. Until next time, goodbye.